we thank him as we continue to discuss about faith. Some people will begin to wonder, for how many months now we are talking about just one topic? We're talking about faith because this is the foundation of everything in life. Faith is the foundation of our Christianity. Faith is the pillar in which every other thing anchors on. Without faith, you cannot pray and get a result. Any prayer that is talking of healing is still must get that healing not by any other thing but by faith. If you want to prosper, your prosperity cannot be actualized. There must be something you are hanging that prosperity on, which is faith. Faith is like a content. Faith is like a content. Faith is like a current. I want you to understand one thing today. I am using this microphone now. This microphone is working perfectly, two of us. Do you know that this microphone is very, very beautiful? And now, there is a wire that connected the microphone to the socket. If you know what I'm saying now, the socket is there, the microphone wire is here. They can achieve nothing unless there is a connection. Praise the living God. The connection of the wire of microphone to the socket, the current, that connection, that thing that flows is what is faith. Without connection, nothing will work out. So faith connects you to every other promises of God. Faith connects to every other area of God. Faith connects you to the things of God, deeper things of God. So today we are continuing to discuss on that topic, activating our faith. Activating our faith. And the Bible says that without man believes and with mouth confession is made unto what? Salvation. That is exactly what I want us to understand. It is with mouth that with our mouth that this confession is being made unto faith. So using faith without your confession, there will be no salvation. There's somebody is saved when he said Jesus is Lord. If that person could not say Jesus is Lord, confession cannot be made unto what salvation. And in the book of Mark chapter that book of Mark chapter 11 verse 23 it says if any man believes in his heart without doubt and say to this mountain be that removed without doubting in his heart he said nothing he said will come to pass everything he said will come to do what pass so what we are saying here today is that believing plus confession equals activated faith Believing plus confession equals activated faith. Everything you receive from God cannot. Everything you receive from God comes through faith. Healing comes through faith. Deliverance comes through faith. Everything you can think of today comes through faith. When you believe in your heart that you have received it, then and then confession is made unto your healing. The moment you believe in your heart that you have received it, then the only thing that will activate it to come into reality is confession that by the stripe of Jesus, I am healed. By the wounds of Jesus, I have been delivered. Without which your believing, your, your claim has nothing to show at all. Praise the living God. Your claim has nothing to show. So what we are saying here today is that you have to say with your mouth what you believe with your heart. You have to say with your mouth what you believe with your heart. Praise the living God. Without it, nothing happened. The Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 10, we are reading from verse 8. It says, but what says it? The word is near thee, even thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. He said the word we are talking is near you. It's in your mouth. It's inside your heart. That is the word of faith we preach. Verse 9 says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Verse 10 says for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. But with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. 
Look at that verse 8 critically and understand that the word of faith must be in your mouth as well as in your heart for faith to work for you. Praise the living God. Hallelujah. For faith to work for you, the word must be in your mouth, the word must be in your heart, and then you begin to produce it. Praise the living God. Hallelujah. If you are thinking right and you are believing right, everything will be right in your life. So no matter how you think right, and no matter how you believe right, until you begin to say rightly, nothing will happen. So these three things work together. You believe right. That is, you think right. And when you think right, you must say things right. Without which, nothing will happen. Praise the living God. I said it last week that many people are confused about, uh, about uh, confession. That the moment you hear confess, they will say, God forbid, I am not a sinner. Uh, but know it today. What is confession? Confession is stating something that you believe. Confession is stating something that you believe. Confession is declaring something you know that is true. Declaring something you know that it is true. What is confession? Confession is at the same time proclaiming a truth you have accepted wholeheartedly. Proclaiming a truth you have accepted wholeheartedly. That is confession. So but for you, if there is a truth you believe, for people to know that you believe in something is, is your confession that we make people. Most of the times people don't know what to believe. It is when you talk that they know what to believe. People don't know what is in your heart. It is when you talk that they know what is in your heart. True of us. Eh? So don't just see somebody and say, understand now. Understand what I mean. How do I understand what you mean? We have not said anything. And it's when you say something, I begin to understand what you mean. So that is what I want us to know today. What are we to confess? Some people have already said something about it, but I want you to understand. Number one thing you have to confess, you have to really understand that our confession needs to center on the principal truth. It needs to center on the principal truth. And that principal truth is nothing but the word of God. That is where your confession needs to center upon. You have to confess what God has done for us through Christ. In his plan of salvation. There is something that God has done for us through Christ. He sent Christ by the death, burial, resurrection, and ascension into heaven. There are things God has set aside for us that the moment we come into alignment with what he has finished in Christ, we begin to enjoy them. Praise the living God. What are we to confess? We are also going to confess what God has done in us by his word and the Holy Spirit. What God has done in us. When you look at the word of God, you begin to discover that there are certain things God has finished in us. There are certain things God has done for us. There are certain things God has set aside for us. These are the things we ought to begin to confess. We are to confess that God is our Father through Christ. Hallelujah. So, when you look at it, you also that is why we need to study the Bible. The Bible says that I have never seen, he have never had, neither the heart conceived what God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed these things to us through the Spirit. He said, for the Spirit, no man knows God more than the Spirit of God. He said, no man knows a man more than the Spirit of that man. He said, but the Spirit of God searches all things. Even the things of God. He said, we have not received the spirit of the world, but we have received the spirit of God that helps us, that teaches us, that makes us to know all that God has given to us freely. That is the force and the power of the spirit. If you study the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 2, from verse 9 to 12, you will see this thing I've just told you. The spirit searches all things, even the big things of God. But when you are not in alignment with these things, nothing will work for you. So we have 
to confess our inheritance in Christ Jesus. What the, the work of the Holy Spirit for us, praise the living God. We have to confess what Jesus is doing for us presently at the right hand of the Father Almighty. The Bible says he's there interceding for us. Jesus has not finished the work of his ministry. He has not finished his ministry of intercession. Right where we are now, the Bible made us understand that Christ is seated at the right hand of the Father, interceding for us, because he knows that this journey is not easy. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews chapter 5, from verse 8, the Bible says that Jesus cried unto God with a loud voice. Why? You see, he learned obedience through pain, through suffering. So God knows that you are suffering. God knows that you are passing through pain. And there's something I want us to know. When you pray and pray, some people don't understand why they quit early is because they don't even know what God has finished for them. The Bible says when you faint in the days of adversity, it says your strength is small. When you turn back at the heat of the battle, it says your strength is small. Anybody that knows is God, no matter what is happening, he says I know. Job say, I will wait for him until my change comes. So it doesn't matter what people are saying. It doesn't matter what people are doing. He said, I will wait for him until my change comes. That is the essence of faith. It takes faith to wait. It takes faith to have patience. It takes faith to be kindness. It, faith, it takes faith to be kind. It takes faith to love. Knowing fully that something will come out of what you are doing. That is what we are declaring. Praise the living God. Praise the living God. So in this place now, we, we are also to confess what God accomplished through us as we proclaim his word. There is something has accomplished. When you know what God has done for you or what God can do for you or what God can do through you, do you know that your life will begin to change? Your confession will begin to change. Praise the living God. These are the things I just bring it to us. The things that we ought to begin to confess. The Bible says in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17, it said we are a new creation. All things are passed away. This should be your confession every day. This should be your confession every morning. When people come to you and say your father sinned, that you need to appease the gods of your father before you begin to succeed. Tell the person that I am a new creation, that all things are passed away. I am no longer in the lineage of my ancestors. I have a new lineage, and that lineage is the lineage of Christ. Praise the living God. I am a new creation. So you have to set a new order. You have to set a new order. You don't stand on what people are telling you. You are no longer part of the ancient God covenant. You are no longer part of your the ancient sacrifice. Now, I am a new creation. All things are passed away. Praise the living God. The Bible says, also, in the book of Ephesians chapter 1, if you look at 7 and 8, it says, in whom we have redemption. Let nobody confuse you that one day you will be saved. As long as you have declared Jesus, you are saved. You are saved. As you follow the word of God, you are saved. So, now, in whom we have redemption. So, through Christ, we have what? Redemption. Let nobody confuse you that there are certain things you must do to be redeemed. That you must offer sacrifice of this and that and that and that. And the thing is happening. I've, I've, I've seen, I've seen somebody. Somebody, yes, a woman of God. Yes, the woman of God. He preaches. He does everything. But the day came that the the, the, the husband they sent the message for the husband that uh, you have to appease the God of your father. And they are all Christians. And yet the woman of God escorted the husband for them to buy the ram that they sent to the village. But that is why they don't even understand that we have been redeemed. Nothing can save you more than Jesus. Praise the living God. That is our confession. Praise the living God. The Bible says we have adoption. We are not trying to get it. We have already gotten it. We are God's children. He has adopted us. And nobody is telling us that you don't belong. Anybody that telling you that, see, it is not the church you attend that makes you the child of God. It is not the church you attend that makes you a candidate of heaven. It's your relationship with God, your understanding about the word of God and the word of faith that will take you to wherever you are going in life, that will take you to the presence of God. If anybody is telling you it is, if it is not our church, you are not saved. That person is a liar because salvation is not in the church. Salvation is in 
Christ Jesus. Praise the living God. He said, in whom we have redemption, who have adopted us as his son. Praise the living God. These are the things we are to confess. The Bible says in the book of Galatians chapter 3, verse 13, he said, he has redeemed us from the cause of law. This is our confession. When somebody stands and begins to tell you, look, uh, there is a cause in your family. If you have accepted Jesus and address it that he has canceled all the legal charges against you, let nobody bring it back to you and tell you that this cause is still running in your blood. Where you are, you can stand between the ancient part and the new generation part. Just like it happened in the book of Numbers chapter 16. When Aaron, Aaron, Moses and Aaron were standing and there was a catastrophe, there was a disaster, there was a plague in the land where they were and people were dying. And Moses said to Aaron, go carry the censor, put in incense and rush to the crowd. The Bible said when Aaron carried that in and run to the crowd, where he stood, the power of death could not cross him. And that day the word of God said, he stood between the living and the dead. By your understanding, by your new creation, by your knowing what you have gotten in Christ Jesus, you can stand between the cause of the people of your family and a new generation blessing. As long as I am here, everything about cause is ended where I am. From me upwards is blessing. From me to the generation yet unborn, I stand. The Bible says he has released us. He has redeemed us from the cause of law. The cause of law is that your father sin. You bear the sin of your father. The cause of the law is that in your, in your family, it, this is how it is. The cause of law is that in your, in your community, everybody must come back to worship idol. Like some people we are, some people we are discussing one day, that there are still some men of God that every year they go to the idol in their village to offer sacrifice and they call it adoration. And they go there, they keep the Bible because they are, they are looking for power. Power that God has given unto us freely. And people are selling their souls to idols so that they get power. Which kind of power? It's lack of knowledge. It's lack of illumination. It's lack of revelation. It's lack of inspiration. The Bible says that he has redeemed us from the cause of law. Look at someone and say, I'm no longer under law. <laughs> Tell the person, I'm no longer under law. I'm not under law. The cause of the law, when you study the book of Deuteronomy chapter 21, 22, Deuteronomy chapter 28, from verse 1 to 14, the Bible kept on telling us that if we obey God, He will bless us above all the nations of the earth. He said that if we obey God, He said that whenever we lay our hands, we shall prosper. He said, if we obey God, He said, we open the treasures of heaven and pour down blessings that our hearts will not be enough to contain. He said, if we obey God, our enemies will gather in one way and they will scatter in seven ways. He said, if we obey God, we shall be the head and not the tail. That is how the word of God put it. Then from 15, he was talking about the cause of law. He said, if you disobey God, He said, you will attack your enemy in one way and you will scatter in seven ways. He said, even in the daytime, you will be going as if to say you are blind. He said, you will suffer. Why? Those are the causes of law. The causes that follow sin. The sin of ancestor. The sin of your community. The sin of your town. There are causes that follow them. But once you accept Jesus, you have been separated. Because the Bible says in the book of Colossians chapter 1 verse 13, he has delivered us from the power of Satan and has transferred us to the kingdom of his dear life. The moment you say Jesus is Lord, there is a transfer in the realm of the spirit. From darkness to light. From poverty to prosperity. From sickness to good health. Knowing that he has redeemed us from the cause of law. Praise the living God. Cause of law. What are the causes of law? The cause of law, number one, is sickness. Sickness is as a result of sin. This is part of cause of law. Number two is financial stagnation or hardship. Or in other words, poverty. Poverty is one of the cause of the law. Praise the living God. Then number three is eternal death. Eternal death is dying to go to hell. But Jesus has redeemed us from all these things. We are no longer candidates of poverty. We are no longer candidates of eternal death, untimely death. We are no longer candidates 
of affliction. We are no longer candidate of sickness. These are the things you have to sit down and begin to bring them out from the word of God. That is exactly what, what God wants you to begin to confess. Not to confess that I am finished. No, nothing can finish you. You are not finished yet. The Bible says that I have never seen, he has never had. You can't be finished. There are things about you that nobody knows. There is a fashion of you that nobody has ever seen. There is a fashion of you that nobody has ever heard of. There is a fashion of you that people have not even conceived in their heart. So nothing can finish you because you are a potential waiting for an explosion at any time, at any day. These are the things the word of God is saying we ought to confess. Confession of faith. Praise the living God. Hallelujah. Not to confess I could die or I don't die. No. You can't die. Not to confess that there is no money in my pocket. I keep on telling people. Many years ago, I keep on saying that my money cannot finish. And people, when somebody met me and said, what are you trying to tell us? Is there no a day that you will not have money in your pocket? I said, my money cannot finish. He said, how? I said, do you have bank accounts? He said, yes. I said, do you know that in the bank, that there is a level of money you can take away from your bank account? At least 1,000 must be there. Praise the living God. Two of us. So if 1,000 a day has my money finished, I mean, my, money, my money cannot finish and I still maintain it. And when you count this knowledge, whether you like it or not, cause, because confession, the Bible says in the book of Numbers 14, 28, whatever I hear you say, I am going to do it. It says confession is made through mouth. Eh? Unto what? Confession. Unto what? Salvation. In other words, the same confession you can come through your mouth unto your prosperity, unto your healing. What is salvation? Salvation is deliverance. Salvation is healing. Salvation is prosperity. Salvation is greatness. Salvation is good marriage. Salvation is good health. Salvation is enjoyment. So when you talk of uh, salvation, you can make confession unto anything at all. And whatever you confess becomes a reality to you. If you say you don't have money, bros, you already clear yourself. Money will disappear because your confession will come to you. But when you say you have money, yes, that's why the Bible says, even the weak, let the weak say, I am strong. In the realm of the spirit, nobody is weak. If you see some, you guys look at it. Somebody can be sick now, even in the hospital, and dream about himself going to work. Dream about himself running through of us. In the realm of the spirit, you can't be sick. If you know that people that doesn't see physically, when they dream, they see. Praise the living God. That is to tell you that in the realm of the spirit, there's nothing like blindness. People that cannot walk, that doesn't have legs, they see themselves in dream running with two legs. Why? In that realm, there is no deformity. In that realm, there is no default. In that realm, everything is perfect. And it is in that realm you bring things to reality. Praise the living God. It is in the realm of the spirit that the confession you are confessing, the moment you are declaring it, you are sending a signal in the realm of the spirit to activate something, create something, and bring it unto you, unto manifestation. Your word is creative in nature. If you have ever studied my book, Unlimited Power of Your Word, there's a place I wrote, I said that with your heart, your design your world, how it's going to be. But with your mouth, you create your own world. When you design it with your heart, you create it with your mouth. Praise the living God. You design it with your heart, you create it with what? With your mouth. So know it. The Bible says in the book of Job chapter 42, when you study from verse 10 to 12, the Bible says on that faithful day, when Job prayed for his friends, the Bible says, and God bless Job. A thousand times more than I has ever. So look at these places. The same God of Job is your own God. If you have ever lost anything in life, you don't just keep on confessing failure. You don't just keep on confessing all your losses. You begin to activate your blessing by saying that God is God of restoration. He said that all the years that the cankerum has eaten, he shall be restored. So there is room for restoration, but it comes via your mouth. It is not only in your heart. If you believe that your life will change, say that your life will change. If you say, if in your heart you say you cannot die before your time, say it with your mouth that I cannot die before my time. Confession is made unto salvation. With mouth, confession is made unto salvation. With mouth, confession is made unto prosperity. With mouth, confession is made unto good marriage. With mouth, confession is made unto greatness. Praise the living God. 
anybody that keep on saying my husband is a bad one, my husband is a, you will keep on enjoying the badness of your husband because you are creating something. And I want you to understand why must we begin to focus on something that is positive about the word of God. The word of God, two things happen. There are two kingdoms fighting here on earth. The kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness. Each of these kingdoms have their own angels. The angels of light and the angels of darkness. As long as we are praying, let the will of God be done on earth as it is in heaven. The kingdom of darkness and their angels are praying. Let the will of Satan be done on earth as it is in hell. In other words, any time, any day, they are waiting. They are waiting for our instruction. If we begin to declare positive things, if you say, I am sick, the kingdom of darkness and their angels will pick it, program it for you and release the sickness unto you because you are the one that orchestrated it. You initiated it by what you are saying. But when you say, I am healed, the angels of God will pick the word you have spoken and begin to recreate healing for you in the kingdom of life. So everything you are facing today is your choice. Praise the living God. We are talking about confession of faith. And this is just the second part. Because we will go to the third part and the fourth part. Praise the living God. So, through mouth, confession is made unto what? Salvation. Praise the living God. Not only that God has blessed us spiritually, according to the book of Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. Not only that he has blessed us uh, spiritually, God has also made a provision for us to be blessed Physically, if you study the book of Genesis chapter 13 from verse 16, if you study Exodus 15, 26, you discover that the word of God made us understand God is our healer, God is our deliverer, God is our provider, God can do all things. The Bible says that this God, when he called Abraham in Genesis chapter 12, if you come down to Genesis 13, the Bible says hey, God bless Abraham in all things. Two of us. In cattle, in goats, and the rest of them. In other words, if it is in our own dispensation, he bless him with estates, he bless him with, in short, assorted cows, he bless him with friends and everything. You see, God bless Abraham. And many of us continue singing that Abraham blesses a man through of us. Eh? So, according to the word of God, the Bible says in the book of Galatians, chapter 3, verse 14, that we share, we are heirs of Abraham. So if you are heir and heir of Abraham, what it means is that what belongs to Abraham also belongs to you. What Abraham enjoyed is you will also enjoy. When you become a heir and heir and heir to the kingdom and heir to the kingdom, what it stands for is that everything that belongs to that kingdom, you share in it. Nobody can write you away out of it. So the Bible says we are heir with Abraham. And the Bible says if we are Heir with Abraham, then we are joint heir with Christ. So, whatever Christ is enjoying, you look at it. Jesus walked in the miraculous. Everybody can walk in the miraculous, but it is tantamount. It is dependable on your confession. Praise the living God. By the time you begin to confess, people will look at you as if to say you are mad. But as you keep on doing it, you are creating a reality. You are creating what? A reality in the realm of the spirit. Praise the living God. The Bible says in the book of Third John 2 that I wish above all things that you may prosper even as your soul prospereth. The wish of God for us is prosperity. So we ought to keep on declaring our prosperity. We keep on declaring our what? Prosperity. As long as you can declare it, Abraham blesses a mind. Galatians 3.29 Galatians 3.11 37, write them down. Deuteronomy 28, read them. You will see the promise of God for us. Everything is available as long as God is concerned. But that they are available does not mean they will just come to you. You have to call them forth. That is confession of faith. That is why the Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 4, verse 17, that Abraham believed God, who called those things that doesn't exist as though they exist. God said, let there be light and there was light. And God said, he created us in his own image and likeness. Today you can declare your prosperity and stand on your declaration and see it come to pass. You can declare the change of your children and see it come to pass. 
listen. It is I, I keep on saying it. When you are a child, go to school, and that child did not do well. Don't say you are an empty brain. Don't say you are an empty head. Just begin to rearrange the system of that child in the realm of the spirit by what you confess. And let that child also that said, I am born, forget saying I am born and begin to say, I am brilliant. I am intelligent. I am a beloved of God. What I am being taught, I receive. I in short, I know everything. The moment you keep on saying this thing, you are activating a reality in the realm of the spirit. Tell somebody, activate your faith. Tell that person, activate your faith. Tell that person, activate your faith. So you can activate your riches. The Bible says the book of Isaiah chapter 1 verse 19. It says, if you are obedient and willing, you shall do what? You shall eat the fruit of the land. So if you are obedient in confession, my brother, my sister, you will enjoy. If you can confess positively, you will have whatever you have confessed. If you say, I can't be sick, you may be sick now, but keep on saying, I can't be sick. Keep on saying, I can't be sick. Every week, I can't be sick. Every month, I can't be sick. And somebody look at you and say, ah, you are taking drugs. No, I am trying to bring out the reality. There is something that is not real. This sickness is not real. There is something that is real. It's my good health. Because the Bible says in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17, 18, it said that everything you see here in life is temporal. The things you are not seeing is what is eternal. That is to say the sickness is temporal. The poverty is temporal. The wretchedness is temporal. Everything you see that is not of God's glory is still temporal. What is real? Is what I'm not saying. And Bible says we see them through the eyes of faith. Praise the living God. When you see through the eyes of the faith, you begin to confess it because we are serving a great and a mighty God. The Bible says in the book of Matthew chapter 7 verse 11, it says, if the gods of this earth can be able to, if the, children, the, the, the fathers of this earth can be able to give their children what is good, it says, like how much more our Father in heaven will give us when we declare how much more will our Father in heaven give us when we announce? How much will our Father in heaven give to us when we declare them? Praise the living God. The Bible says finally in the book of Romans chapter 5 verse 17 that God has made us to reign with Christ here on earth. Don't just look at yourself. The devil cannot oppress you because you are reigning. It is a king that reigns. And the Bible says in the word of a king that is power. Every day and now, just conclude it in your mind. Devil cannot oppress me again. Devil cannot intimidate me again. Devil cannot forsake me again. Why? I am reigning with Christ. Because I'm reigning with Christ, the Bible says in the book of Ephesians chapter 1, from verse 19 to 21, that God has wrought a great and mighty work through Jesus Christ by making him raising him from the dead and made him to sit in the heavenly places above all the principalities and powers. In the book of Colossians chapter 1, it said that Jesus is the head of all the principalities and powers. So if he's the head of all the principalities and powers and you are reigning with him and you are joined him with him and then the, how can a subject oppress the main person? Is it possible? It's not possible. So there's no room to cry, there's no room to fear, there's no room to to, to there's no room to be afraid of anything because God created you to reign in Christ Jesus. And this day, the reigning of yours will begin to manifest. Amen. It will begin to manifest. It will begin to manifest. Amen. Let no man look down on himself. No, no man look down on herself. Let no child look down on himself. Let no child look down on herself. No, this is not me. The Bible says, I have never seen. If your teacher stands to that and say, you are dull, you are an empty brain, just look at the teacher and say to the teacher, you, there, is, there is a fashion of me. There is a fashion of me I have not known. There's a version of me I have not known. When that one will manifest, you will know that I'm not poor. When that one will manifest, you know that I'm brilliant. When that one will manifest, you know that I am great. And I read about a man, Dr. Mike Moreau of the Blessed Memory. Then this guy goes to journey to school, and the day he could not understand anything. And one day the teacher looked at him and said, "You are." You are nothing and you cannot amount to anything. And this child cried and went to the mother and said, Look at what my teacher said. And the, the, the mother called him 
And he said, is that what your teacher said? He said, yes. The mother opened Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20. He said, to him who is able to do more abundantly and exceptionally, more than you can think or ask by his power working in you. He said to this small boy, there is a power of God working in you. You can do more exceptionally and abundantly. After that, this boy sat down with the Bible at the age of 13. He sat down with Bible and began to study the Bible to an extent that even the father and everybody began to say to this boy, we have been reading this Bible before you were born, but now how do you understand this thing? The same teacher that said, this man become a global figure. He, before his death, he was, he, was, he was the advisor to almost hundred and something president of different nations. An advisor. But the teacher said to this small boy, you are a dollar. That is the word. You are a dollar. So you cannot amount to anything. But he changed his narrative. No child is dull. No child is a fool. No child. Every child can go far in life. The Bible says that Daniel was ten times wiser than the contemporaries. Why? Because an excellent spirit rests upon him. When somebody say you cannot achieve anything, stand and say an excellent spirit of God is upon me. So I can do greater than what people think about me. My business can go. When they look at you, they say you can't succeed in this business. Just look at them. There's a fashion of you they don't know. When that fashion begins to unfold, my brother, they will be, ah, is this the person we know or another person? I decree and I declare that this week for you shall be filled with surprises. I said this week for you shall be filled with surprises. This week for you shall be filled with surprises. Your life will become a surprise to many. Your life will become a testimony to many. There are people that will not carry Bible this week. But when they look at you, they see the blessings of God upon you. They say, Kai, indeed God is with this person. Indeed God is working with this person. That shall be your testimony this week. That shall be your testimony this week. That shall be your testimony this month. The Bible says that through my confession is made unto salvation. I declare unto everyone that gathered here, your light will begin to shine. Your favor will begin to manifest. Your greatness will begin to manifest. They look at you yesterday, they say you are nothing. But that was yesterday. Because I have never seen, he have never heard, neither the heart conceived. What God prepared for those who love him. I am a lover of God. I love my father. There is something he prepared for me. I am a lover of God. There is something he prepared for me. There is a new chapter of me that nobody has ever read. You have not read that chapter. By the time that chapter opens, your mouth will be opened. You will be bamboozled. You will be confused. He said, it is not a man that I know. Hear me and hear me well. It takes just a day. A day for a man's story to change. When God wants to work for you, even in the next hour, it may not look like it. Even in the next 24 hours, it may not look like it. But God is working. They will look at you. They say, this one is finished. You are not yet finished. In the next minutes, people don't know. Hear me, hear me well. Joseph was in the prison. Ah, even as at yesterday, he doesn't know that something is happening. Even as at today, he doesn't know that something is happening. He slept in the prison as a prisoner, but he never knew that the death that is breaking that story will change. I announce to somebody here, in this week we have entered, your story will change. Your story will change. It's a prophetic declaration. It's a confession we are making in the realm of the spirit. We are creating the reality. This ministry cannot stay like this. We are marching forward. We are going higher. Your blessings will surprise your generation. When God is walking, it doesn't look like it. When Naaman appeared before Elijah, Elijah said to Naaman, go and dip yourself into Jordan. So Naaman dipped himself the first one. It seems that nothing is happening. Second one, fourth one, fifth one, even at the sixth one, nothing seems to be happening. But on the second one, Kabbalah and Zegar, the word of God says, he came out of the body, looks like the body of a small child. By the mandate of heaven, within seven days from today, there shall be a breaking news. Breaking news of favor, breaking news of breakthrough, breaking news of success, breaking news of announcement. Upon somebody listen to the tone of my voice in the name of Jesus Christ. Made unto 
come out. No wonder the Bible said the part of life and death is in your tongue. The part of life and death is in your mouth. From this day I circumcise your tongue. May your tongue begin to speak positive. Everything you declare from today shall come to pass. In the name of Jesus Christ. I am now to you. Your season has come. Your hour is now. It is done and it is settled. You are blessed. You are lifted. It is well with you and it is done. For in Jesus mighty name we are prayed. Lift your hands and wave to God. Asakana dito de mim. Shaka para gadus que de para dar. Sigue de para gadus shaka para gadus. Raka para la gadus. Blessings beyond measure. Blessings beyond measure. May this be